Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, guys. Happy Thursday. <laughs> Let me cut this off. Oh my gosh, okay. Man, happy Thursday. Y'all, we are, <laughs> I'm on here late. You're probably wondering why. Some of you probably know why if you're around here. Um, so where I live, they have shut down schools and everything because of this storm they say is supposed to be headed our direction today. It's supposed to be pretty intense, but I have been praying all morning and yesterday against that storm that it will not come in Jesus' name, that it will not cause any destruction, that it will not be, there will not be high winds or anything like that that's going to come near our area. I've been praying against that, so I hope you have too, that we are not going to experience any of that, and it's just going to be a wonderful day, <laughs> and the kids got out of school, and they got to stay home today, so we are, we are all here. Everybody is in their bed still. Um, everyone including Lee, <laughs> but I'm up, <laughs> I'm up because as soon as this, I don't know about y'all, but as soon as the sun, uh, peeks through like my windows in my room, <laughs> I'm up, sun's up, I'm up, but wasn't that from Frozen, didn't, didn't one of those characters on Frozen say that, the sun's up, I'm up, yeah, that's me, anyways, good morning, got my Joy's, uh, pancake house, I know it's not pottery like I normally use, but I love this cup so much because shout out to Joey's Pancake House in Maggie Valley, North Carolina. If you've never been, you need to go. It's going to be, it's an awesome breakfast. Just get whatever they have. If they have a special on their pancakes though, with special fruit, like if it's blueberry season or peach or pumpkin or whatever it might be right now, my mom is watching, so she might know what's going on at Joey's Pancake House right now. If you have a chance to go to North Carolina in Maggie Valley, Visit Joy's Pancake House. Okay, that's my little plug for Joy's. I don't get paid to do that, guys. I just love that place. <laughs> okay, I'm going to set my cup down here. So we are on day 92. Day 92, 100 Days to Brave by Annie F. Downs. Day 92, and today's title is Your City. I love this, guys. Your City. Your City. Jeremiah 29, 7 says... Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Did y'all catch that? Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. And yes, Jeremiah's talking to the children of Israel and he's saying, yes, you've been, you've been taken out from where you live. You're somewhere else. You're living in this area. But he's saying, you need to, you need to seek that. You need to pray to the Lord for that place where you live. It might not be where you want to live. It might not, I mean, you might not have expected to be in that place. Maybe you have. But God is saying you need to pray for that place where you are. The city in which you live. The place which you live. Because he said pray to the Lord for it. Because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Lo love this scripture. Okay, if you're watching me live, give me hashtag one. If you're watching the replay, give me hashtag two. Here we go. <laughs> So she said, God has placed you in your city for a purpose. Let's just soak that in for a minute, right? Selah. <laughs> God has placed you in your city for a purpose. Even if you wish you lived somewhere else right now, even if you're on a military base just for a season, even if you have bigger dreams, so why, So what does it look like to love the city you're in? What does it look like to love the city you're in? Why is here your spot on the map? Why have you chosen that town of all the towns in the world to be your home? Maybe you didn't pick it. Maybe it picked you. <laughs> but you're there, right? You're there. When you think about the puzzle of the person you are, 
the zip code on your mailing address is an important piece. It's a very important piece. As a high school senior, I stood in the middle of the town square in um, Ciudad Cortez, I think I'm saying that right, Costa Rica, she was in Costa Rica, and shared the gospel through an interpreter. And yet one of my best friends from my high school in Georgia was not a believer. And I didn't even talk to him about Jesus. Why does it sometimes take more courage to talk about Jesus at home? Isn't that true? Why is that? Why? She says, why does it sometimes take more courage to talk about Jesus at home? Why am I more willing to sign up for a mission trip to Mexico than to serve the homeless in downtown Nashville? Because being brave at home means serving. Y'all, she is, she is right. She is right. She's hitting the nail on the head right here. Because being brave at home means serving. When my small group of college students celebrated our one-year anniversary, we decided to serve. We arrived in downtown Nashville and made our way to a large overpass where many people were gathered under the bridge. A worship band was playing using one of those sound systems that kind of hurts my ears like a traveling preacher from the 1980s would use. Homeless people sat in rows and rows of chairs, each with a plate of food on their lap as volunteers wove in and out and helped everyone get settled. It happens every Tuesday night in our town. The Bridges Outreach Ministry feeds homeless men, women, and children a huge and healthy meal, and then someone shares the story of how God has changed his or her life. As the people leave, they fill bags with fresh produce donated by local grocery stores. My small group and I had never gone before, but our church goes once a month on Tuesday nights, so we know it was a respected ministry to be involved with. The girls were nervous and hovered close to me like chicks to a hen for the first few minutes. But then they just got in line with the other volunteers and started to serve. Carrying food, helping others find a seat, passing out fruits, veggies, and huge bags of bread at the end of the night. We were there for a few hours, but the experience stuck with, us, with all of us much longer. It takes courage to serve in new places just down the street. I was so proud of my girls jumping right in and being part of an experience where they didn't know was going to happen. You can be brave right here, right in your city. <laughs> right in your city. Guys, one of the, one of the greatest things, um, man, and I'm not, I'm just going to say, I, I love my church. And I'm not trying to be prideful about my church or anything like that. But I love our community. And I love what other, other churches do in their community, community. But I can't speak for everyone right now. But I can speak for unity in, in the valley, in Gloverville. And, um, and we feed people, y'all. And if you've ever had a, um, a chance to volunteer and to experience what it's like to stand in the line and, and load those boxes of food and get to talk to people, maybe help fill out the forms. I do that a lot, so I get to talk to a lot of people in the line. And, um, and just to, to, you know, wish them, you know, bless their day and, and help them out and be a smiling face and brighten their day and just be able to help somebody. Guys, that's the best thing ever. It is the best thing ever. It's the best thing ever to be able to help somebody. You know, they say the giver is always, always is, feels better than the, than, the one, than the receiver, right? And it's so true. It is so true that you can serve in your city. You can be the hands and feet right where you live. You can make a difference in your community. You can do that. If you see people gathering and doing such a great work, come be a part of it. Hey, can I volunteer? Guys, we always need volunteers. We, we can always use a hand. And, um, and maybe God is asking you to do something right where you are, in your community, in your area, wherever you live, right? She says the Be Brave Challenge, volunteer in your city. Volunteer in your city. 
Serve the place where you live in some way. In some way. We, she's been talking about this a lot. I keep hitting this point that, that you know, we, we always think about missions and things as being outside of our city and that we have to travel so far away to serve. But guys, you can serve right where you are. You are where you are for a purpose. You are there for a reason. Jeremiah told them, right, that scripture, he told them, seek the peace and prosperity of the city where you are, where you have been sent, where you are, where you are living. Pray for it. He said, pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Man, I'm telling you, it's the best thing. Don't you know when you take care of God's people, God takes care of you. You don't have to worry about anything. We, you are seeking the kingdom of God first. When we are kingdom-minded, we are not church name-minded. We are not denomination-minded. We are not uh, name-minded, pat ourselves on the back-minded, right? But we are kingdom-minded people. We are all on the same team. We are all for the same goal, right, of winning the lost, reaching and helping those in our own city, our own place where we live. When we all are in one mind and in one accord of doing that, man, something amazing happens. Man, I'm telling you, God just explodes. His love explodes. His goodness explodes. It's like wildfire in a city of his goodness and his grace. And God just starts to begin a revival of people's hearts. And things start waking up in people. And they say, you know what, God, there really is a God. He really does love me. He really does care about me. And the next thing you know, your needs are being met. And you didn't even ask for them. They're just, it just starts coming, right? God just sees the need and you're helping somebody else and, and you're not so stuck on yourself anymore, right? We're seeing other people instead of looking in the mirror, we're, we're looking out and saying, you know, how can I be a helping hand? Because isn't that what love does? Doesn't love walk into a room and it wants to know how it can be of help to someone else. It's not worried about what we, oh, what are they going to think about me? What are they looking about me? And you're, and you're thinking about yourself, Right? But when we allow God's love to fill our hearts and our lives, it's all about other people and what we can do for other people. How we can be God's hands and feet and his heart. All for his glory, right? For souls to be saved, for people's lives to be changed. God, how can you use me today? I think about the young boy, the fish and the and the loaves, right? And how God fed the 5,000 off of that food and it was his lunch. He was being used. Don't you know that he was just like overjoyed? Man, his lunch didn't just feed him. It fed thousands of people. God took care of him and all of those that were around him. Blessed it, broke it, and fed thousands of people. Could you imagine sitting in that crowd and, and the disciples coming up? Hey, you've got some food. Uh, okay. And God used you in that. Your, your, what you had, God used to bless so many, so many more people than you can even imagine. Volunteer. Go volunteer. Get a part of an organization or a group that is making a difference in the community where you live. If there's nothing there, let God lead you in starting something. Hey, what can we do? What can we do to help the people around us, right? Man, do that today. Your city, your place, you're there for a reason and a purpose. No matter how short of a period it is or how long, you're there. So get plugged in and make a difference right where you are. Y'all have a wonderful Thursday. We're praying against this storm. It's not coming in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we're not going to have any kind of bad weather. I am praying it and declaring it and believing it that we're just going to have a really good day home with our families today and they can go back to school tomorrow and everything will resume to normal and nobody's property is going to be damaged. There's not going to be any loss of life today. I am just speaking against those things. I'm speaking peace in the atmosphere over our area and um, 
all of these areas surrounding us that we're going to pray for our city, right? We're going to pray for the area that we're in today that has this threat of bad weather. And I am praying that God just, just stops it in the name of Jesus and that it does not become anything today. And, um, and, we, and we're not going to complain about it. <laughs> we're going to thank God that he intervened. And that, um, yes, we took cautious uh, precautions and kept kids home today, and that's okay. And we're going to just be thankful that we have uh, no bad weather today. That's what we're praying for and believing. Y'all have a wonderful day, and I will see y'all tomorrow right here on the EMJ Daily. Bye, guys.